Hi guys, this is Larry the Barberman as part of my lockdown back to work barber PPE tutorials. Today we are going to talk about respirators and I'm also going to give you a little bit of background knowledge on how viruses are caught and how the respirator can prevent you from contracting viruses or diseases which will help you make an informed decision should you choose to use this line of defense to protect yourself when you get back to work. So the respirator is this device here, which is a mask-like device, which protects the wearer from inhaling airborne pathogens in the context of this video. These are sealed, unlike the surgical mask, which means that they can have a filtration factor rating, which is done by an official body. So with these, where they're sealed on the side, there is no way of any particles actually getting inside because of the seal. So that is the great thing about the respirator. As I said, I'm going to give you a little bit of background knowledge on how the virus is caught, how I'm going to do that. I'm going to use some um, barbershop items that you guys use on an everyday basis to assist you in your work. Coronavirus, just as an example, can be contracted in two ways, through aerosols or droplets. I'm going to use this Andis Cool Care disinfectant spray to give you another example of aerosols. So at the bottom of this can, you've got disinfectant spray. When I hit the button or press the button, that disinfectant spray is aerosolized. And when things are aerosolized, they are suspended in the air. Yeah, airborne travels by air. These small particles that come out of this can have left like a cloud of aerosols. Yeah, so that's what aerosols do, they suspend in the air. Now, as humans, let's talk about coronavirus or COVID-19. If we were to contract it, that means we would have breathed in these small airborne particles into our respiratory tract, and that's how we would take that into our body. If we were emitting the virus, if we were infected or contaminated, this would be by breathing. We would breathe out aerosol particles or just talking, we would breathe it. It's kind of like a soft thing without talking about sneezing, which goes into a whole new different topic. So that's aerosols. Scientifically, they are less than five microns. You're probably asking what is five microns? Five microns is 14 times smaller than the diameter of the average human here. So now you're starting to begin to know why these things say suspended as airborne uh, viruses or aerosols. Next, the other way you can contract it is through droplets. And I'm gonna give you the initial representation through the squeezy bottle, which you guys would use to do scissor cuts. And when I squeeze this, the characteristics of it, it kind of spits, then hits the desk. Spits, then hits the desk. Probably in the name, droplets. When these droplets fall to an inanimate object, such as the desk or the rubber mat, these surfaces become what's known as a formite. And a formite is an inanimate object that is capable of transmitting the virus to me, a human. Okay? So that's what um, happens. And we, as human beings, we can contract it by touching a formite, then touching our mouth, our nose, or our eyes. Or if someone directly spits and it goes into our mouth, our nose, or eyes. So there's the two ways we can contract or spread it on to somebody else. Um, scientifically, a droplet is 10 microns or above and put in here terms that's seven times smaller than the average diameter of a hair all right just to recap before i get onto the 
The next subject, aerosols suspend in the air. Very fine particles go into our respiratory tract. Droplets through spit, coughing, talking loudly, sneezing, hit the surface, become a formite, you contract it through your nose, your mouth or your eyes, or it can be directly spat into your mouth. Now, here's the thing, hold tight for this one. The bad news is, and this is what makes COVID-19 so devastating. These droplets, if squeezed in the air, and the starting velocity, so the speed at which it starts its journey is right. The airflow or air current is right, and the humidity is right. These droplets can become aerosolized, which means they can become like this. Now, to add insult to injury and to make things worse, in the summer, barber shops, confined areas, you have fans going like this. Now, if I spray this spray, I don't know if you can see it, but right now it's bending round. If I put it here, now this is, these droplets or aerosols are coming back round to me. That's danger number one. So when this is going off, throwing these uh, aerosols everywhere, both made from the droplets that have now changed its form into aerosols, which incidentally, that is called droplet nuclei, yeah? You've got the hair dryers going. So people are pointing these in all directions. So in the barbershop, in a confined space, in the barbershop, in a confined space, with potentially these going, these going in all different directions, I personally wouldn't be protecting myself with a surgical mask, bearing in mind that there's gaps in the side and holes here. I wouldn't be protecting myself with one of those. I would be using a respirator because I know it's sealed and nothing can get inside of them. That's what I'm gonna go on to in the next segment of the video. I'm going to go into the rating. So when you see the abbreviations on these respirators, you'll be able to get it in a heartbeat, what's good for you. So you'll be able to read that. That's what I'm going to do into the next segment. This is stuff that the government is not telling you. So I hope that little analogy has sunk in and it makes sense to you. See you on the other side, guys.